I'm with uh, Kit co-editors Paul Harris and Niels Christensen. I don't think that we have had a PDAC with this much market turbulence in my lifetime in terms of attending PDACs. We started off, well let's reel back. We had the Monday, the start of the week, everything looked rosy. We had gold hitting up a multi-year high of uh, 1,670. We're off to the races, everything is looking great. Then the whole week comes down and everything goes to heck. We look at a 14% drop on the Dow Jones. Gold loses over $100 in value, losing 4%. Silver is down 10%. Next, we start the PDAC over on the Sunday. Everybody's checking their phones, wondering on how on earth the markets are gonna open. And then there's more to the story now because we've got into Monday, but now there's been a Fed announcement and there's been another whipsaw again, Niels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the Fed, um, well, the Fed and US Treasury had a phone call with the G7 nations. Um, markets weren't really impressed with that. And then 10.30, uh, 10 o'clock, Fed comes out with a surprise 50 basis point rate cut. It uh, markets shot up. And gold's up now 3% on the day. Um, interesting. The uh, the Dow equities aren't aren't taking the news as as good news. So they're down uh, over 2% today as we're talking. So it's just volatility is the name of the game right now. I think. When you're talking to people uh, during uh, the sessions here and during your interviews as well too. What were people saying about the markets? What were they saying? How were they reacting to it, Paul? I think people see it as a temporary blip. The question is whether a temporary blip is hours, days, or weeks. Um, but they do see it as something that the, the markets will overcome and it's more, more of a normal pattern will resume at some point in time. How about yourself, Neil? I think it's all about um, first quarter versus, and first half versus second half. If the virus, you know, the coronavirus, uh, if it can lay dormant during the summer, during the warmer months, maybe we get a recovery, maybe we don't. Um, a lot of the guys that I've been talking to say, though, that gold is, is going to be the, the commodity to own. I mean, uh, demand destruction across the board in commodities, um, gold looks good. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it because the market drop was caused by the coronavirus. And firstly, uh, before we talk about uh, how that impacted uh, PDAC, uh, what was your preferred uh, greeting? Because there was a number of them. Meals. What did you settle on? <laughs> I still shake hands. Uh, yeah, and then and then I go for the then I go for the Purell. So yeah, I still shook hands. Do you go to the Purell immediately after, or do you well, manage to hide it? You got You got to be a little bit more polite. But okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, I was trying to bring in the elbow, um, uh, elbow, uh, elbow hit, but uh, I don't think I was getting much traction. It seemed to be awkward. How about yourself, Paul? That's just odd. I mean, I, if somebody doesn't want to shake hands, fine. But I'm not doing all this kind of safety dance kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and just washing hands. It's, it's probably very good in general for public health and hygiene and personal health and hygiene that there has been such a, a focus on that. The, the organisers here at PDAC have um, had a, a crew of staff avidly washing down with alcohol the uh, the escalator rails the handrails and all kinds of surfaces that are going to get touched and get touched by hundreds if not thousands of people so they yeah. even handed out these nifty little sanitizers which i've been using so uh, you're uh, you're, uh, you're you're obviously one of the more important people because i didn't recall myself getting one of those sanitizers so. they're in the bag you got you got to check the bag <laughs> That was my fault. That was my fault. Uh, it, it, we, we don't understate uh, what is happening with the coronavirus because, uh, you know, China is obviously a huge metals market for it. It's a number one consumer for gold. Uh, it is 70% of a seaborne iron ore. Uh, we had the PMI manufacturing index that have come out and you've looked at uh, the worst drop ever. That rivals what happened in the 08 crisis. Uh, that is also what is also happening with um, uh, you're also looking at a four million, uh, four million barrel drop in uh, oil demand uh, on a daily basis as well too. So serious over there, and then also have can serious ramifications. What is also going to be happening for commodities, potentially too, also with precious metals because China again is the number one consumer for gold that we're having there. Yeah, I mean definitely the the surprise move today shows that um, you know the, the U.S. leads the world. So you know. Financially, U.S., the Federal Reserve seems to be trying to get ahead of the curve, as it were. 
Um, you know, they couldn't wait until March. If they waited till March, they would just be meeting expectations. So I think they really need to, to come out and show that, hey, they're going to do, they've said they're going to do whatever it takes to support the economy, um, and they're doing that. So, I, you know, as far as, and I, and I don't know if it's, if the, you know, I, I think the thing is that nobody knows how serious the virus is going to be. I mean, I don't. It's not necessarily about the the death toll, but you know, if millions of people are quarantined at home for three weeks, what does that do for production? I think that's you know, and I don't know how much the Fed can do with that. I mean, if you miss work for three weeks, uh, who's going to pay your rent? Who's going to you know? So maybe the government needs to step in with. Uh, uh, fiscal uh, uh, fiscal programs to help people who are caught up in the in the virus. I think uh, we are talking about uh, the measures that uh, PDAC took. We did notice that there was a couple of companies that did uh, drop out of attending uh, PDAC. That we saw, went through the usually sold out uh, investors area. There was uh, some blanks, uh, some people that didn't show up. Uh, it seemed like uh, the organizers were kind of caught in um, how would you say? A difficult circumstance and then some individual companies are making their own decisions not to actually attend. Well yeah I think uh, companies have made the call or perhaps even their staff have said you know at the moment I'm not traveling so their call was made for them. The I would say the attendance is noticeably down. Um, I think for those of us here it's perhaps in some ways a more pleasant um, conference. It's certainly much easier to get around and navigate and um, usually it is a bit of a, a, a bit of a scrum so um, some of the talks and sessions have been cancelled. Um, so it, there is a very different feel here this year. Uh, let's talk about uh, your favorite moments from uh, PDAC. What kind of sticks with you? What was, uh, what was the most interesting that you found there? Meals. Uh, that, that's easy for me. Um, holding uh, 10 kilos of gold from the uh, Royal Canadian Mint. Uh, what, nearly a million dollars Canadian? That's just like... Whenever you can hold gold, you feel the wealth. So that was that was a very cool moment for me. Uh, I, sorry, Paul, I'm going to go before you because mine's actually quite dry. Um, I was, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a geek with uh, electric vehicle and uh, battery material space, but uh, I enjoyed my talk with McKinsey. Uh, he was talking again about the actual importance of actually having purity of supply. So if you have like a large lithium provider, a large cobalt provider, what you really want to pay attention to, an interesting factoid is if they actually have long-term contracts with major suppliers, with major battery material suppliers, because that way they are working through the battery chemistry and that way they can actually provide the appropriate quality because these things are at such a fine level and there's a real chemistry component to actually providing um, to providing uh, materials into the battery material space it's over so Paul bring us to a conclusion here for me the, the highlight undoubtedly was the uh, the gold and silver party last night at Ripley's Aquarium because the attendance is down it was it, when I got there at 7 o'clock, there was nobody there. You can so it was move. fantastic. You go around and see all the exhibits. It's a wonderful aquarium. And uh, you know, usually it's packed and you can't get in, you can't get out. And so that really brought home how much the attendance here has been impacted. And it's a good fundraiser for uh, the uh, Sick Kids uh, Burn Program. So it's a win win everywhere. Thank you very much, you guys. I especially want to thank Paul Harris as well, too, that uh, kind of came in in a pinch and helped us out with uh, editorial duties here at uh, PDAC. This is Michael McRae with uh, Kitco News at PDAC 2020.